This video brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Welcome to the 24th podcast from the Principal Cast crew. We are all back together tonight. And that means we're going to hear from Teresa Stagger, Jessica Johnson, and myself, Spike Cook. This is a weekly roundtable discussion about current topics in education leadership. For more information, please visit our website at www.principalcast.com. You can connect with us in other ways, such as uh, through Twitter, at PrincipalCast, or find us on iTunes or video on YouTube. Tonight's topic, the after school principal, is brought to you by Storyboard That. That's the world's best storyboard creator. You can enjoy 25% off any purchase today at storyboardthat.com slash teachercast. Before we go into our main topic, we always like to start out with finding out how everybody is. So Jessica Johnson, back from her time off, and it looks like she is ready to go and share with us how she's been doing. You know, I don't. I feel like we just talked. I don't know what has happened in the past two weeks other than work and wrestling. That's about it. But the Badgers won, so that's good, and you all can join me in cheering on Wisconsin. We're going to have to. There's nobody left to cheer for. Yeah, we're great. You can cheer for us. I know you are um, great. I thought I, they played phenomenally over the weekend, so I'm I'm did. all in. They did. Yeah. There's no yeah. spike on that team, though. No, there's not. Well, we'll have to change that then. I d and just something else. Um, I did have uh, Tony Sananis, Aaron Simpson, and I had wrote uh, a while ago. We co-wrote um, an article, "Lead Like a Pirate," that was published through NASP this week. So. Oh, very um, cool. I'll try to tweet that out. Lead like a pirate. Yeah, well, we have to unpack the pirate soon because I've, you, you know, I've, unpack the pirate. Yeah, we do, we do. It's going to have to come because, you know, my <laughs> theories on that. pirates and my my philosophy on all this, and and I honestly I haven't read the book yet. I think the guy who does it. Uh, he's amazing, but I, I just want to see the connection because I, I don't like pirates. We had, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> when when we first discussed this book, <laughs> it probably was within our first like two or three shows, and, and Spike went off on this tangent about how pirates are bad and they're and the they're like, the ones who take things over and it yeah. Just, and so we were, you know, so the the pirate thing is kind of a touchy subject for Spike. It really Spike, is. Weren't you supposed to dress like a pirate for Halloween? I, I forgot about that. I think I did, but I didn't want to, like, continue, like, the stereotype of, of, of pirates. But see, I, I guess, you know what I need? I need to read the book. I really do need to read the book. It really is a good book, Spike. And it's, it's a great good. book. You can't knock it. Yeah, I'm not can. knocking it, and I'm not knocking the author. But I'm just saying that the... You better not, because he's my person I'm shouting out tonight. He is? Yeah. Right, row. Well, I have no problem with him at all. In fact, he's <laughs> probably doing an awesome job, and he's a great educator. My yeah. concept is with pirates. I just don't understand why we like pirates in this society. <laughs> they do not do good things. They never did. They yeah. never did. Yet you like to watch Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> right. <laughs> And Honey Boo Boo is trying. She's trying her best. <laughs> God bless her. Oh, my gosh. Teresa, okay. how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastically. <laughs> Michigan and Michigan State lost today, so it's been a good day Aww. in my house. It's tough. But I was, <clears throat> I was excited on Friday to finally get Dr. Spike Cook on the Michigan bandwagon. You did. Because he wanted nothing to do with it after the Fab Five that happened, you know, 25 years ago. <clears throat> so once we explained to him that we were all like, I don't know, 10 the last time there was a Fab Five in Michigan, and that we have a spike on our team, he was a little more more okay to jump in. So then he jumped in today and sent me a message on Facebook that 
It was not looking good, and it was not looking good. Oh, it was such a good game, and it was so close. Both the games today were awesome. and um... But the Chiefs stands alone, so we now all all root for Wisconsin. Which Yay! is okay. As long as there's still a Big Ten team left, and, and it's Wisconsin, I'm all in. So we know that you're not feeling well, but what kind of week did you have? Um, I had a good week. Um, we had... I'm <laughs> watching... They're being crazy in the chat room. It's feisty. It's like we get everybody together, and they're all Craig Yen's back, Chris Nessie's back. They're on fire. Um, my week was good. Uh, we had we had our open house on Thursday, which um, is not for those of you who are in private schools. You know what a um, what an open house in a private school is like. It's very very different because it's more of a recruiting thing than just an open house. So it was a long week, and then. Uh, but it made for a nice relaxing weekend because it was over. And we have, I have an accreditation visit this week, and I also have a visit from a Twitter pal tomorrow at school, which I'm really excited about. It is, um, he's at St. Mike's, K, uh, let me find his Twitter handle. I'm, it's Nicholas Harrington. He's at St. Mike's Kinder. Um, he's actually, he's a, a principal uh, he he teaches kindergarten, but he wants to be a principal. And so we've been tweeting back and forth. And he is from Michigan, but he is going to be um, he's going to be here for opening day tomorrow. Tigers opening day is tomorrow. So you know, thank goodness we have that to look forward to. <laughs> and, so he's uh, going to stop at gonna, your school. Yeah, he's going to stop. Oh, that's at the awesome. Because we're only like 20 minutes south of um, of the city. So he's going to stop and visit early tomorrow morning, and I'll get to show him around and. That's so really very cool. cool. And yes. I think he'll really like our show next week because we're talking about aspiring administrators, what they're going to need to know. So That's right. So, Spike, what about you? Well, um, other than just writing and writing and writing. Um, and what are you I'm writing, Dr. Spike I'm, Cook? I'm working on a book. Yeah, on, who didn't tell me anything about it? We're going to book on connected educators <laughs> that uh, – you know that Jessica, you know, was very instrumental in helping me become a connected educator, and she doesn't know apparently about the book that I'm writing, and I feel really bad about that. Yeah, because you didn't tell me. I thought I did. I, I thought did. I did. Vox, he did but... tell you in the box. I think it was during the time that you just started over. That I declared yeah. boxer amnesty because yeah. you gave box like eighty times in a day, and I gave up. Day. Yes. yes. So I think it so, was there. I, I yeah. So I've been doing that, but we are um, we are doing the same thing that Teresa is doing, and you might find that ironic because I work in a public school. But uh, one of the things that I've discovered is that we are losing about thirty five percent of our kindergartners to private and charter schools. So we are going through a whole planning process right now about how to address this problem and it's everything from the appearance to our school, way we look at visitors, um, the um, curriculum, the emphasis on K1 and 2. We are just really going through a systemic process on change and I'm really excited about that so I'm, I'm hoping to, to talk more about that as it comes through, but we did a couple workshops this week where we actually had our staff um, voluntary uh, before school come in and start going through um, what we call a um, an affinity chart where you develop ideas, you brainstorm ideas about the root cause of the problem, and then the next stage is you develop a, solu a solutions matrix where you have the teams uh, work together again to develop solutions for the problem. And it was awesome. I mean, people just were working together, and we're talking about everybody from our custodians to our uh, instructional aides, you know, teachers, nurses, guidance counselors. So it's going really well. Um, and I'm reading a book, uh, How to Walk to School, right now about the Nettlehorse School in Chicago. And uh, really excited about the things that they've done. And I was able to connect with the author on Twitter. So I'm hoping to one time have her on. Spike, I just want to throw in um, something for, the, for those of you who are, who are listening. <clears throat> when Spike just mentioned all of the people that he had in that meeting, and you, know, you were discussing that it wasn't just the teachers, but it's the custodians and it's the, you know, the counselors and, and the um, support staff too. I think 
there are <clears throat> there are times that we don't remember or don't um, don't take into account enough how much our support staff can be um, can be a, a such a huge help in things like this because they're they they bring a different view of the challenge to the table and I think that in a lot of you know any type of school improvement thing you have to make sure that you're involving your support staff exactly and I, I think they feel um, they feel a part of it which is good and many of them are residents you know or send their kids and I, yeah. and I think that's a, that's an awesome story so I'm excited uh, you know next week we're going to continue to work on that and then um, we're going to talk a little bit more the following week about <clears throat> well we're going to be planning this out but we're going to do a whole f we have somebody coming uh, for for an entire day and they're just going to film everything from you know the buses coming in to the after school programs and everything in between and then that's going to be uh, you know we're going to of course edit that out and then that's going to be our, our video that we're going to be showing at our open house coming up uh, on April 16th so very excited. Can you go one more time Spike on what the book um, Melinda Miller is asking just for a um, just a, a reminder of what the the walk to school book Oh is. sure sure um, anything for Melinda um, my, <laughs> my my Twitter uh, grandma. Um, <laughs> she loves it when you say she that. Does, she does. She loves it. She loves that. Um, How to Walk to School is about the Nettle Horse School in Chicago, where they had an out of box thinking principal uh, that was dealing with a lot of these same issues. Um, where the local students were not going and not attending the Nettle Horse School in Chicago. Um, and so kids were getting bussed all you know throughout the city the the when she took over the building was like sort of in decline but it was an older building very historic looking building and she met with a couple of parents and basically said what can I do to make your kids come to the school so they went back and they kind of thought about some different ideas and they came back and they talked to her about it and she said okay that's awesome let's do this so I think they started out with eight parents and then it just took on from there and you know there's a bunch of videos that are out there the transformation uh, the book just goes through and chronicles you know what they did step by step and how they did it mm -hmm. and it's just phenomenal I mean I, I'm, I'm loving it and i um, hoping to, to apply some of those principles at our school to add that to my list, it's, I'm I'm having kind of a there's a there's a weird weird thing happening right now because Jeff's got the split screen going on the video, but oh now it's off again. Um, but the split screen had the chat going up right next to the video, but the, ch the chat is live and the video is off. And so it's oh, <laughs> I wasn't. I you know it's funny I wasn't even looking at that, but. You know, Brian had asked me a question uh, in the chat about uh, total quality management tools, and it sounds like uh, Dr. Deming and Brian is exactly right. We have consultants that work with us uh, in a systemic process that we use, and I've blogged about this. But Brian, you are right on. We we are using some of the um, you know the, the total quality management tools that um, businesses use in order to identify and solve problems in your organization. So very cool connection there, Brian. Okay, so, but we're not talking, I mean, this isn't even our topic. I mean, this is, this is crazy. But you know what? I feel like we're just back together talking again. This is... We got the band back together. <laughs> but unfortunately, we have someone who has like one sinus down, so that's true. So she's just <laughs> not just, feeling it. It just makes me quieter this week. You should take it yeah. when you got it. <laughs> okay, so um, let's talk about our main topic tonight. The last time that we tackled this, unfortunately, Jessica couldn't be here, but we are talking about the after school and before school uh, for some of us uh, principal. So let's talk about this. Uh, after school, the bell rings. Jess, what happens there? What happens from there? Um, for me, once the bell rings, I'm on parking lot duty. I always joke and say, I'm going to play in the parking lot now. Um, and then usually after that, I run in for an IEP meeting or a staff meeting or another meeting with, with a teacher. Um, it's very rare that I don't have a meeting. 
Um, and then I am usually done by like 3.45 with whatever meeting, and then I just work until 5. I, whether that's just catching up on paperwork or... So what time do you guys get out? We get out at 2.50. Okay. So everybody's sort of cleared out by about 3 o'clock, 3.15? Um, yeah, students, but right. the staff are here until 3.30-ish. Okay. 3.30 is the official time unless we're in a, a meeting that goes longer. Okay. Um, and then usually I'm sitting in my office alone from 3.45 until 5, just, you know, catching up on work. And is 5 o'clock, like, um, is that something that you came up with, or is that, like, and, and is it, that like, is hard? That is my time. That's is it a hard time. 5 o'clock, or is it a soft 5 o'clock? Uh, sometimes I stay later, <laughs> and my husband texts and says, "Where are you?" <laughs> um, yeah, but it's typically it's it's five o'clock. Chris okay. Nessie wants to know when we take a huge sigh of relief that the day is actually over. Um, Usually, when I'm in never. my car. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, is it uh, is it to the point that you're like okay? Because for me, in all honesty, once the kids leave. And the kids are out the door, and the students are out the door. And my children, my two children, are in latchkey because they love latchkey. And I can sit down and know that there's no one left. Yeah, that I think for me, it's after you know whatever after school meeting, and then it's like, okay, I can get some work done now. Yes, that's that's what. I, yeah, that's mine too. And it's not really a sigh of relief that the day is over. It's a sigh of relief that the part of the day that I cannot control is over. Yes. Yes, and Craig Yen just asked, is the day ever over? No, because even when I leave at 5, I'm packing up my bag, deciding what I'm going to work on after my kids go to bed, and I'm bringing it home, or after my kids go to bed, I come in. Like you can see right now, I'm in my office. <laughs> so does it matter then what time your, your teachers leave, Jess? Um, my teachers, by contract, they are here Monday through Thursday until 3.30. Friday, they can leave at 3.00. Um, and they do have to stay to that time. Um, I do have teachers that stay later than that. Um, I'm not out there policing it. Um, if they are going to leave early, though, they do have to put it in our online system, and that, that time is docked if they leave before 3.30. Wow, even if yeah. it's like 10 minutes. Yes. And what if, the, what if they say, look, I have this doctor's appointment. Um, can I just go? No, they have to put it in. I, I and I don't like that, but really, that's that's like a district uh, policy. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow. That's not me. <laughs> How about you, Teresa? What time? What time do you guys get over? And and or what time does your school day get over? What time do you get out? Um, my school day is over at the bell rings at three thirty, but. Um, the teachers are required to stay until 345 unless we have a meeting. We have meetings on Thursdays after school. And um, those usually go until 430. They start at 345 and then they go till 445, maybe 5 o'clock depending. Uh, because we only have a full staff meeting once a month, maybe twice a month depending on how many Thursdays we have. But I'm usually, you know, it depends on the day. My kids, my children are 6 and 4. So they're in kindergarten and preschool. And they're, they go to the school, they attend the school that I'm the principal at. So they're involved in a lot of the after-school activities. And for my daughter, it's not a big deal, but Jacob is a preschooler. And because of that, I have to be at the activities he's at. So like Mondays, we leave immediately at 345 because we have to be at the bowling alley at 4. Or um, on Wednesdays, we have to be at Lego Club, but I can work while they're at Lego Club because it's in the gym, and I can sit in the gym and get work done. So, I, I mean, realistically, I'm out of the building by 5 o'clock every day if we don't have to go somewhere else. But I think it's really only feasible because my kids um, because my kids love to be in Lanchkey so much. <laughs> you know, that's really the only reason it's, it, it's doable that way for right now. You know what I was just thinking about? What like, is there a difference? Like, because I spend a lot more time after school, um, but I'm also, I'm also the husband. Right. So I was wondering, is it different or more difficult being a female education leader of a building with all the additional responsibilities? Well, I think it depends what your 
setup is, I guess. My husband works from home, so he's kind of the wife. And, he can, <laughs> and I know that sounds horrible. I'm sure he loves when you tell him that, too. I'm no, sure he, he does, too. But no, he... I don't take my kids with me to school even though they come to school here. I could not get work done if one of them was here with me. So <laughs> he drops them off in the morning. He picks them up at the end of the day. Wow. Um, so I, I, it works for us. See, okay. and we discussed that too because my I bring the kids to school but only because I can't get up early enough to make it not... <laughs> <laughs> to, to not make them because because I just don't I don't do mornings I'm just not I'm not a morning person and I'm trying to be Chris Nasty introduced me to this 5 a.m. super podcast and I got so pumped about it for a couple of days and I I just am not I am not a morning person but so the the deal is because my husband works downtown Detroit so it's out of his way to drop the kids off at school not terribly but it is out of the way so if I can get out of the house by like seven o'clock where there's no way that I could take the kids, then he brings them and it's no big deal. But I just, uh, because I'm working, I usually, I, I prefer to work into the evening. You know, after the kids go to sleep, I prefer to do a lot of my busy work at night. So, you know, it works out okay for me. How about you, Spike? I, I tend to stay, I, I can't get in early enough. I think when we did this before, I talked about like the, the before school principle. Yeah. And uh, so I usually get there around 8 o'clock and we start at 8.50. So that gives me enough time. But there are, there are literally teachers there at 6 in the morning when the building is opening up. Uh, I too am trying to make my mornings more productive. I'm trying to use that time to go to the gym and stuff like that. But uh before everybody gets up, which proves to be a little bit difficult. So after school, I would say everybody's cleared out, you know, dismissal and everything like that by four o'clock. Um, the school itself is pretty much a ghost town um, because a lot of the, a lot of the teachers come in early because we start right. so late. So um, you know, and and two, they have a lot of different things that go on after school. And I, I certainly don't begrudge anybody from either staying or not staying. It's, it's completely up to them. We have a couple after-school programs that go on, but most of our stuff is done in the morning. But I will usually work until about 6 o'clock. I need, I, for some reason, I just need that extra time. And sometimes it'll go later um, because I try to um, get things done so that when I do come home, then I don't have extra stuff. Now, Grant, I'm not the one that's doing dinner and all that kind of stuff. My job is the cleanup crew. So my wife cooks and I do the cleanup. So, uh, but most of the time, and just the, over the last three years being somewhat new, um, I, I've had a lot of late nights. I mean, I just, I don't feel like I could get as much done if I didn't stay after. But if I had to leave and take care of the kids and all that kind of stuff, it really would pose to be very difficult. So I, uh, I certainly don't, you know, I, I don't envy that situation. And I just do wonder if that, if that impacts uh, women in leadership roles. Oh, I and, think it still does. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, even though my husband is home during the day, if I don't get home to make supper, they'll eat Fruit Loops. Like in um, the nights that I have to stay for a board meeting, like the kids go to bed, like, in their clothes from the day, homework not done, they're up late, like, it, it, there's still pressure, like, I still need to go home and be a good mom. Right. Yeah, and then not to mention, like, all the activities that they're in, like, I want to support the kids at my school that are doing the different activities, but, you know, my kids are also in karate and soccer and, you know, basketball and all that kind of stuff, so it, it, is, it is a little bit diff difficult to, to balance that out. Um, but I like that time just to be able to get things done. But I find that the later I stay, it's because um, I have people that will stop in. So they'll stop in and they'll want to talk, which is fine because a lot of times you don't get a chance to really chat during the day. So that just puts things back. But I, I'm, I'm just obsessed with, like, before I leave, I want to make sure that I have all my parent phone calls made, that I have everything ready for the next day. Uh, I probably overemphasize my email and to see to make sure that I'm you know caught up on my email so I make sure to, to get all those things done before I leave and sometimes that takes longer than others mm -hmm. um, I I try to go to school events at night too um, 
N not even, I mean, just obviously I'm at any school event, but like sporting events, um, middle school and high school sporting events, just to like be in support of them. Um, we are all in one building, which is probably very unique compared to most principals. Mm -hmm that, you know, our high school kids are still in the same building. So um, I try to go to those, but it um, my family comes with me, and it's that was our decision, you know, when I got this job of should we live in the community or not. And we decided, too, because then, you know, all of the stuff I go to, it's benefited my family and the school both at the same time. So it's it's like they live here, too. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's here all the time. And that's tough for me because I'm about 45 minutes away, yeah. um, and and I like that that I could have that drive and I could have that downtime. Um, but it, it's it's interesting. I just saw a, a, a chat from uh, Simon Miller who said I used to stay really late, but I found that no matter what, there will be always be more work. Important to commit to a cutoff time and go home. So I'm sure as Simon's saying that, my wife is probably saying, even though she doesn't listen to this podcast, uh, <laughs> she's probably saying like amen, you know, because I do just get into a rut and I want to get everything off my plate. And, you know, and he's exactly right. I come in the next day um, and there's still more to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a while where my goal was to be done by five. Um to only have one day on the weekend that I'd work. Um, and for a while, I was doing really good. I think it was last year that I did pretty good at following that, of not bringing home the work, of you know only working a little bit on Saturday. And I don't know what it is this year. You'd think I'd be better, but we've had so many um, issues of you know my secretary out and this person out, and I'm having to fill in for things that it. I have not been caught up since who knows when. So I've been working all the time. I made a conscious effort this year because I knew how. Um, You're I, a first year principal. I, Your life well, is just going to suck. You just need to right. stop. <laughs> <laughs> suck it up. Just deal with it. No, it, I, because I, I know myself. And, and so I made a conscious effort to not. Like, I have my work phone and I don't have. Um, I don't put my email on my personal phone. And on Saturdays, I just don't turn it on. Like, I just. I won't. And I, I have taken Saturdays as a no work day because if, if there's anything that is, you know, if, if anything, if the school's burning down or something is absolutely hugely awful, they have my cell phone number. So they can get a hold of me if they need to, but nothing is so important that if I take Saturday off, and so it becomes, you know, it's mine and my husband's day, so we can just kind of go out to eat. Day. We can just yeah, go I'm out get so jealous. Eat. You guys are always like doing such cool just things. Go out to eat without children. Too. I know it's. it's almost, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what though? That's that's interesting because I struggled yesterday, right? And I'll tell you why. I went. I took my son to karate. This is on so it's a Saturday for those of you who are listening on a podcast uh, later on. So it's a Saturday. So I take my son to an early karate. I get it done. I go to the gym and I did yoga. I came back. I got a few things done. I cleaned up around the house. Um, did laundry. Did you know vacuuming? You know all that kind of stuff. Then um, I had to go out and I did a bunch of errands and yada yada yada. So. I get to the end of the day, like around 4 or 5 o'clock, and I'm like, wow, I haven't even done anything. But it was good that I hadn't, like, done anything, meaning, like, all the stuff that I needed to do for work. Right, right. You know? And then I actually went to my buddy's house, and we watched the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament. That was so amazing. And... uh so I, I had a good like I like like you like I I kind of tried to take that away, like that Saturday and be like okay I'm not doing anything you know for work. I think it's hard though too because do you, would you also put that in like do you not tweet on Saturdays? Do you not oh, no, uh, blog and no for me that's that's like an outlet that's fun time okay. and that's learning time and I I don't I don't see my professional learning as a part of my job. If that makes sense, because it's something that I—I I mean, I enjoy my job, but I think I tweet less on Saturdays, but I'm still involved in it because it's—it's—it's it's, it's enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, but but wouldn't some people say, you know, that's you you know you're just you're just working more? Probably, but I I think of 
you know, I, for me, I've always been someone who who just I learn. That's what I do. It's just I I like to read. I like to research. The you know the, the what is it your what are those your um the way that you you know are you a learner are you an enabler are you <laughs> like an emotional right. you know I, I'm a learner and so I I need to do that mm -hmm. and so I don't Twitter to me is is a way of socially interacting but it's also it's a learning thing for me so I, I think for some people it is working and so you I think that's one of those things that person by person you have to decide you know where where Twitter <clears throat> excuse me, or blogging or Facebook or whatever, fall into your into what you're doing and, and decide whether or not that's something that you give up on your day off. Um, in the chat room, Peggy mentioned about how tech makes it easier to be able to do the work away from the building versus having to, you know, be in the office working crazy hours. And that's a really good point. Like, I um, have made a conscious effort to switch things over to Google Docs as much as I can, like um, budgeting, like you know, signing POs and whatever. I used to have this big book and I'd have to keep track of it. I put it all on Google Docs so I can just access that stuff at home. You know, anything that I can, I've tried to digitize that so I, you know, don't have to make a gigantic stack of things home with me. So, uh, yeah. Pess, do you still have that, like, do you associate Twitter and blogging with work? No. No, okay, those that's are personal. Different. So if you're, gonna, if you're just going to do... Um, you know, Although like I haven't off. been on Twitter much with, you know, being a wrestling mom on the weekends, I haven't, <laughs> I, I, I'm only on Twitter, it seems like, when I'm in a scheduled chat at, at this point in life. But no, to me, Twitter, I don't associate with work. Yeah, okay. and you know what, in the chat room and on Twitter, I'm getting some some replies on Twitter and, and also in the chat room, a lot of people are saying, Brian Alabeck put it really well, he said um, his PLN time is his personal time, his educator is who I am, not what I am. So PLN time is a natural extension of who I am. Hmm. And, and that's, that's really hard good. for non-educators to understand because like, you know, I'll be boxing with you guys or, or other principals and my husband will be like, are you, are, aren't you done with work? And I'm like, actually no, I'm venting to them so I don't have to vent to you. <laughs> this is my outlet. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It, it, it has been, I don't think I could have gotten through this first year of mm -hmm. being a principal without having <clears throat> Voxer or, or some sort of an outlet to just, you know, yell or cry or, <laughs> or laugh into, mm -hmm. you know, at, you know, as it's happening or right after school or whatever. I wonder if some people are a little bit hesitant about joining social media for, like, say, Twitter and associating it with learning and school and being, you know, whatever it is, because they may see it as, well, I need, you know, I'm, I need to have some downtime away from all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've always wondered that because I guess it's really hard for us to, to understand, you know, the, the people who are non-connected, you know, in a sense. But I try to listen to what they say, you know, just so that I can just I can kind of understand it a little bit better but I think that's got to be one of the things is that they feel like they just want to leave work at work but it's so funny that all three of us had said that we don't see that as work we see that more as you know just learning or I mean I, I, I equate it to to you know what people were doing 20 years ago reading the newspaper you know what I mean like I, they didn't seem to be thinking that they were working then yeah they were just catching that's up on a, that's you know a what I really mean? good point yeah so I've always tried. I've always emulated the, um, you know, the fathers that came home from work and they had the newspaper out and no one bothered them. And now that's just me, and I come home and I have my phone. Nah, it doesn't. It's not the same. But anyway, you right. know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> hey, so Craig just asked an interesting <laughs> question, and I've always wondered this. Um, wonder if other professions are utilizing Twitter in a similar manner as educators. I think that there are, I see a lot of business people using Twitter that way, and the only reason I know <laughs> is because I had tweeted out something for an admin, um, for an admin chat, thinking that it, try, using a hashtag, and it was, it was not an educational administration chat, it was a business administration chat. Oh. So... And you know what? I have that's seen a, like yeah, um, that's a good question. Pub author publishing companies. Uh, I'm in when I was working on the fiction writing. Um, I, I know they've got stuff going on too. Well, it's interesting. There are um, there are other people 
like in business that you know if their business has a philosophy where they don't want that you know they want them to go home and spend time with their family and stuff like that like even you know some big corporations are like that so yeah you're right I wonder like is there a business chat is there a uh, you know banking chat Wall Street chat I don't know I, that's a really good question I know that people use Twitter you know for everything nowadays you know from for weather and you know all, all that kind of stuff but I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, there's a there's a um, Joe Sanfilippo just had an, an amazing quote in the chat room, and he said, "Trying to describe the hours of an of an administrator is like telling you to smell the number nine. It's <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Yeah, and here's the funny thing about Joe. He always comes up with this stuff. Like, that is amazing. Uh, please, I mean, Craig, Craig, it Craig Yen, please tweet that out. I did that. that, that Craig is, Yen, it's a public relations or yeah. actually yeah, we that. have to be very careful about what we say on this podcast because oh, sure we've got listeners, up. but then Craig Yen tweets out our direct quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if my husband checks the Twitter feed tonight, Craig Yen, you are in trouble. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. Funny. Smelling the number nine. That's wow. good. That's good. And there's a lot of people favoriting it. I just I just tweeted it out. <laughs> oh um, boy, that's gonna so, that, that needs to go on one of those infographics. I know, yeah. Oh it does. I'll put it in one. Um so so here is um because in our in our doc, and I don't want to lose this while we're um since we're getting so close to our to when when the bu the buzzer is gonna go off. Um just, um in the chat room, Brian Ellebeck had asked um, if any of us are a part of things after school that require our attendance. And this oh, is part yeah. of what we have on our list. Oh, yes. You know, we didn't get to oh, that yeah. last time. Other duties as assigned. assigned. Yes. 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 <laughs> meeting, minor performing arts, sports, community events. So let's talk about that. Okay. So we in our district, we are not required to go to board meetings. I think that's the big <gasps> thing. Let's do a little round oh. robin. Yeah, we are board required way. to go to board meetings, and I have to speak at every board meeting. And and when I say attend board meetings, I don't just mean sitting in the audience and can do work. No, everybody is in a horseshoe. All of the board members with them with you know, there's microphones up there, the cameras on us, and I'm sitting up there as well. Interesting. Yes. Oh. Teresa. Uh, but we don't have. Well, I have. I do have board meetings, and I'm required to be at the school. It's we have an advisory council. We can't have a school board, but um, so I'm required to be at the advisory meetings. I am required to either be at or um, or send a representative, one of the teachers, to the PTO meetings, which is usually. Um, usually what I do for PTO. I went to the first couple just to make sure that we were all on the same page and then I have teachers go. But as for other group meetings, I have like finance committee meetings, things like that, um, That, but that's through the church. But those And those are on Saturdays, so they're not after school. But to be totally honest, they're Saturdays at 10 o'clock and they're an hour long and I would so rather they be on Saturdays at 10 in the morning than at, you know, to have to go back to work at 7.30 another right. night a week. So... But that's about it for us. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have to do board meetings, uh, and if we do attend, uh, most of the time, if we're doing a presentation that has to be previously scheduled, uh, or we can just attend. And um, yeah, so I go to very few of those, and it's it's one of those things. It's just part of the culture. It's not not it's not it's not it's not uh, expected, um, but. I mean, we have PTA meet, or we have a home school association meeting. We have those right after school, so I don't have to wait actually a really long time. Those are held right at four o'clock, right at dismissal, and then um, you know, in elementary school, there's not a lot of like nighttime events. Like, I mean, we may have like once a month. We you know, like we'll have the reading and fitness night, and we'll have all that stuff, which is fine. But now, I could imagine if you had a high school principal on here. Oh yeah, totally different story. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did my internship at at the high school. And <clears throat> it was a total. I mean, it's you know, you're talking. We had five five principals at the high school, and wait, you're talking, say wait. I'm sorry, say yeah, that again. Yeah, we had five principals. We had one principal and four assistant principals because there were 2,500 kids in the school. So they've got and the the. Different principals also acted as counselors, though, so they did a lot of the counseling 
type um, duties, and then they were in charge of different parts of academics. So <clears throat> they, um, but but each of them they split up, um, you know, the because at each music concert, and we had you know 800 kids in the high school band, so there were always two concerts, and then we had. Uh, you know, and these are four, you know, four times a year. We've got mm -hmm. two band concerts, we've got a choir concert. Plus, you're talking about, you know, games. There always had to be an administrator at one of the at any of the games that were at the school. Um, it's a whole different ball game with secondary, and I think even middle no school. No pun intended. Probably a lot like that too. Yeah, yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> I never intend them. <laughs> but they're, um, it's. Uh, yeah, it, it's a whole a whole different. I think middle school is probably a lot like that too. If there's anybody in the chat room that can um, that can give us a a heads up on that too. Oh, it's Chris Nassie says that his high school has a principal and four VPs too, one for each grade. Mm -hmm. So, Jess, do you do a lot of those events because you guys are all on the same campus though? Y yeah, I um I don't go to all of them. I will. I go to the ones that are of interest to my family. But uh, you know, like I'm, we're here for wrestling practice almost every night. So if there's a basketball game, then we'll just go from the wrestling practice to the basketball game and eat popcorn for supper. And um, or we'll, you know, we'll pick some of the the big games or you know track events that are at home. We don't go away. Um, probably one a week. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But but I don't stay for all of it. Like I don't have to be there. I'm just there with my family. And when it's time for my children to go to bed, you know, we'll duck out and leave early. Uh, but I do try to come to like you know when the middle school, high school has their concerts or or whatever. I try to come to those. Um, any of and any events that are for the elementary building, I I am always here for those. Right. I mean, unless for whatever reason I can't make it, I I am always here in the building when there is something going on for the elementary. When I look at, at at our district, I think, you know, obviously the superintendent and assistant superintendent are at a lot of the, you know, the board meetings. So we, we have them actually twice a month, and then uh, they have all those, like, different committee meetings that they have to go to. Um, when I look at our, obviously, beyond just the high school, like, when I look at our supervisors, uh, I think Teresa was talking about this before with, like, our fine and performing arts supervisor. Mm -hmm. He has – he I don't know if he has to, but he goes to every single – um, concert, you, you know, in the fall and the spring, there's 11 different schools, and they all have different concerts and all different kinds of stuff going on. So it, it it is a lot. I feel also bad for the athletic director because he also has to go to all those different events that are after school, and they don't necessarily. I don't think they're able to come in later and stay later. So they just have to. It's just. Yeah, ours isn't. Our athletic director is at everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ours is too. Well, at the at the in the public schools they were. So mm -hmm. It's a different you know different situation here. Um, Mr. A. Clark mentioned that he's out at least four nights a week easily. It's a great way to engage, though. Yeah, yeah, and I know Joe Sanfilippo d does a lot, and he he's out a lot as a superintendent. He's talked about that, um, and also living. You know, I think he lives like right across. He the street lives from directly across the street. <laughs> Wow. And like, I know that because he'll box and say, I'm on the way home. And <laughs> like 30 seconds later, I'm home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's pretty. So was there any other questions from the um, from the I chat room? I don't think so. I think that they are, um, I think that they're they're kind of having separate conversations. Well, right now, right now Josie and Filippo is giving Jess some crap. About. That's all he does. But you know what, Joe? Look at this. I've got my Grow Crickets cup, so you can't. Oh, good for you. Me. Oh, well done. No, he um he just said that he, that Jess was still on and that he must have missed the freeze. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. Yeah. So um he's Joe said he's at most things, but he chose this, and their family accepted it. They live across the street from the school, which helps. Mm -hmm. So. Um, oh, Chris Nessie wants to play a little word association. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, then, well, um, I'll let them know because they're behind us that they can. Give it's not far word. behind though tonight. It's, it no, it's happen. really not. Um, let's do our principles to follow, and then we'll do word association. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Jessica. Okay, so mine is not a principal. It's Dave Burgess, the author of um, Teach Like a Pirate. 
I, I know I broke the rules. He's not a principal, but I think no, other it's not. No, I, I think we have I to get beyond that. Every principal, including Dr. Spike Cook, should read. <laughs> Teach like a pirate. So can we have um, him on and have yes! the great the great pirate we will debate? Get him on. We will let's get. get let's. Uh, you know, I know, and I follow him, and I see what he he's. I know he's a nice person, and he's a great presenter. But we're gonna have a discussion about pirates. And his wife is an administrator as well. Um, okay. His wife is Shelley Burgess. Um, I'm not gonna spell it right, probably. So I won't spell it right now. Oh, that's our timer. Oh, you gotta, I was going to say you got to take that call. There you go. Um, no, it's take that. It's going to blow up. It's going <laughs> to It's been 45 minutes. It's been 45 minutes, people. Let's She's keep gonna going She's going to turn here. into a, a pumpkin. Um, be, as you know, she likes, She does not work after our scheduled time. She. <laughs> I'm going to go home and go right to bed. She's so um, she's up. what we like to call in the podcast community as yabba dabba do. So, you know, the bell rings and just like the <laughs> Flintstones and everyone rushes out. <laughs> I actually did a post on that because I was at another building, not my building, and the work day was over, and I swore it was like the Flintstones and the bell rings and yabba dabba do. Everybody's sliding down, getting out, out the door to get their, you know, Brontosaurus burgers and stuff like that. <laughs> what? what? First Brontosaurus burger reference Please. of the year. Are there going to be more? You never know. You never know. <laughs> but this so is okay. So Dave. So Dave Burgess. Um, yes, and hopefully we can set up the great pirate debate. I just tweeted him. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, Teresa. All right, my uh, my principal to follow, who also now is not a principal, but he was. Um, his name is David Barry, and he is um, he was one of my professors at U of M Dearborn, and um, he did a lot of um, he he was the principal in a in a very large district near here in Michigan, and. He did a lot of, um, when they opened new schools, they would send him to kind of open the schools, and then he was a superintendent, and he's now on the west side of the state, but he is, I mean, literally just a wealth of information and a super, super cool guy. So David Barry 5 um, is his Twitter handle, and I have tweeted that out as well. And Spike, what about you? Well, apparently, according to Teresa, this principle was noted before, so this is a... Last week. Last week, so obviously you can <laughs> tell that I don't pay attention, but the person that I, <laughs> that I am going to uh, recommend is Ben Gilpin, and oh, he, he's, great. he's great. He is from southern Michigan. That's a, uh, a state that you should know very well, uh, Teresa. It's like a hand. It's like a hand. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And um, <laughs> and he has a really awesome blog that I am I, I am very uh, enamored by. It's called Colorful Colorful Principle, uh, the Colorful Principle, and it's colorfulprinciple.blogspot.com. And he's and, also um, on Voxer. He is on Voxer. He is on Voxer. Oh, no, good to know. Jess, can you find his Voxer name and send it to yeah. us? Yeah. He went pro, so it's Ben Gilpin. <laughs> he went he pro. went pro. He went pro. If you get the pro account, you can, you know, make your name that. Or no, he's Benjamin Gilpin, just like his Twitter handle. Okay. That he's pretty sense. cool then. That's pretty he cool. He is pretty cool. He's a pro. He's I a might pro. work on the three dollars someday. Yeah, maybe that might be fun. All right. So in order to get out of here in a decent amount of time, we have some. Um, did everybody get their person out right? Yes. 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 Okay, very good. So we have some words. I will read them to you. Nobody look in the chat room. Okay. Oh, because you'll ruin it. Did. How come you get to cheat then? Because yeah. I suck at this game. This is her so segment. I can cheat. Okay. That's okay. right. Let's <laughs> go. So, all right. The first one is April. When? Wet. <laughs> wet. That was mine too. Was wet because it it always rains. Wait, and can I call time out real quick? I, I don't know. Did it rain by you guys this week? And it snowed. Yeah, it, it snowed. snowed. All right, because everyone on the East Coast is real freaked out because you know that's, that movie Noah just opened, and it's rained oh, no, for like three raining. days in a row. I mean, I'm telling you, it has not stopped raining. Well, I'll tell you, and I'll tell Jess the same thing I told her earlier this week, that if that snow comes my way, we're going to have some very strong wording because yes, we're done with it here. Done. Done. 
Done. No more snow in Michigan. We're less than two inches away from the all-time record, and I don't want it. So you okay. keep that snow, Jess. Whoa, she's, she's right. getting a little feisty. She's right? getting a feisty. Fault. I didn't order the snow. <laughs> we, yeah. we, hold on, can I say that for a second? We keep it here. <laughs> We've isolated the problem, and the problem is snow. <laughs> That's right. All right. So here's here's maybe the, our word for April should have been snow. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. Here's the next word. It is fools. Fools. I think it was supposed fools to be April. Fools. Fools. Gold. fools rush in. That's a good movie. Oh, there you go. Oh, is that a romantic mm -hmm. comedy? Probably. Yeah, that's really old. All right. All right. April Fools. So ironic. So fun. April Fools is so much fun. All Love right. It. Um, the next one is currently reading. Oh, like four different books. Um, I'm reading Reading in the Wild by Donalyn Miller, and I'm reading Eric Schenger's book, Digital Leadership, even though I already read it once, and some other books. And I'm reading uh, Vocab Rehab. I do like Vocab Rehab. I'm reading Vocab Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Uh, how about um, spring? I think that's a good when. How yeah. forward did it go? I don't believe I'm pull this up right You're now. not even oh, doing yeah. it right. You're, it's, no. it's supposed to be a word. Spring, spring. spring forward. How far did it go? All right, Teresa. <laughs> I'll, I'll play this game okay. correctly. Right. Thank you, Spike. <laughs> what is I it? Right. playing spring. <laughs> Spring, spring ahead. How spring far ahead, ahead did it go? go. It's not here yet. You're not. You're just not getting me. If you're in a state that's warmer, that didn't snow this week. That's right. They don't understand. Um, the next one is re <laughs> The next one is relax. What? What are you talking oh, about? Oh, oh, she's the worst at this game. <laughs> relax. All right. Something that we don't do. That's not the right answer. You have to. Oh my goodness. There's no have right or wrong answer. It's yes, there is. Spike. Oh, good relax. grief. That's a joke. Right. Spike. Spike fools. You get to relax. Spike. Spike, here's your word coffee. Essential. <laughs> yes. What do you have when the five hour energy shot runs out? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just no change this? Can we make a definitely. new segment called. Jessica just rants on and, and pretends she's doing what, am I, what am I doing wrong? Am I only What's the word association? Answer? You're only supposed to answer with one word. Let's see. I can't only word answer in one word. She's just word. so happy that the microphone is I can go in 140 out. characters, okay? Oh, Simon says goodness. that he's correcting says... No, for word association. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know it was supposed oh, to be one boy. word. Chris Nessie, says, Chris Nessie says hashtag follow the rules. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize it was just one word. And then, all right, last one then. Here okay. is your, here oh, it is. Boy. Just one word. See if you can do it. Ready? Saturday. <laughs> I'm afraid to say something. I'm going to get in trouble. Cricket. Wrestling. There you go. That's there you I go, Jessica. In my world. Wrestling. There, and she, there one she goes. <laughs> One more, and it was a really good one. It's Craig's. Oh, maybe. Freeze. What? Freeze. Dodge and drop. <laughs> All in one with no space in between. Dodge and drop. <laughs> Chris, Chris Nessie says new show, Principal Cast Overtime with Jessica Jones. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? <laughs> We want to thank our sponsors, <laughs> storyboardthat.com. Remember, all our loyal TeacherCast followers can enjoy 25% off of any package purchased today at storyboardthat.com slash TeacherCast. Make sure that you follow our awesome and ever-present producer, Jeff Bradbury, at TeacherCast on Twitter, TeacherCast. Dot net for his blogs and resources and teachercast.tv. Ladies. Can I just say, <laughs> to say now was just making up for all of the lost words every time I was dropped. Oh. <laughs> so that's a good that's one. That's good. That's, fair. that's excellent. Now that I know what we're playing. That is fair. <laughs> Figure out why you're being. Why are they yelling at you? Yeah, why are they yelling at you? Maybe that's why they said relax. They weren't. They, that wasn't a word association. Maybe they're just telling me to relax. <laughs> relax. 
Oh gosh, that's funny. All right, well, Jess, uh, since since you're back and it's your uh, deal, why don't you give it to us? Principal cast out. <laughs> oh, look at that graphic. <laughs> it's you, Spike. I was gonna say, is that supposed to be me? <laughs> well, it's sure.